Hello, everybody. Ooh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hello. <gasps> Welcome to Ask a Reporter. I'm uh, Jack, filling in for Amelia. I am Joe, <laughs> filling in for Thomas. Lots of filling in going on. Lots of, yeah, oh yeah. Which is kind of ironic because there's no fill there's here, no it's all gone. <laughs> filling in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I can't stop looking at myself in <laughs> <laughs> floating in space. Uh, oh, also, we want to apologise um, for last week because there was no Ask a Reporter. No one filled in for anyone. Um, so, but we're going to actually have a little bit of a uh, special treat for you all at the end of. We're going to cut this section short. I'm um, talking about space junk, and we're going to go get Liber over to talk about the reef later on. Um, so that will be exciting. Um, if you don't understand what's going on here, we've got green screens going on and I just happened to wear a jacket that was the same colour. Can you, can you turn the green screen off and we can see the setup? Mm. So this is green screen this on. This is the magic of, of telly. Ah, and now it's off. So I've just got a, um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get, I didn't get the memo. You didn't so. get the memo. Yeah. Um, damn. But there we go back. <laughs> and, and this is cool. Cause look, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Look, now I'm... And he appears. Oh, I have a torso. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> that jacket was very hot as well. Anyway, um, that's the most fun I've ever had on Task <laughs> Reporter. I'm kind of lost for words. most intro everywhere. Yeah, of <laughs> um, So we were talking about space junk. Space junk. It was Thomas. Um, Thomas's story he'd worked on, um, but... He, you're quite familiar with space junk. Yes. You're, I, quite up, you're littering it all the time. I am. I'm the one sending the junk up there. No, I, I did a story for BTN High uh, the week oh, before. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably familiar with space junk. Yes. Um, and BTN High, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's basically BTN, but for high schoolers. Um, if you've got a sibling in high school, tell them about it. If you just know high schoolers, <laughs> tell them about it. Um, or go watch it yourself. Yeah. Maybe you Why not? Might, yeah. It's available for everyone. It's available for everyone. Um, well, let's get into some questions because we've got a double feature today, as I mentioned, Space Junk and Reef. Um, <laughs> Marley asks, was it fun in space? Was it fun in space, Jack? Well, you were the one just floating then, around. Yeah, like, yeah. I, that was the best time I've ever had. <laughs> um, no, we haven't actually been to space. Luckily. Yeah, maybe one day. Um, Marley also asks, actually, Marley's from um, Gilwinga in New South Wales. Gilwinga. Um, when was Space Junk discovered? So, ooh, that's a good one. When it was first discovered, well... Do we know that? I'm not sure if we know that, but it's been mm. it's been around ever since space exploration started back in the 50s. Yeah, and ever so, since we started sending things up. Yeah, because pretty much as soon as something gets sent up there and it's no longer used or if it's destroyed, it becomes and space, space junk. junk. So, do, we, do we know when, because we've had a few instances of space junk falling to Earth, mm. do we know when the first sort of recording of that or when, what a big major piece of space junk landed? Oh, well, I know some of the earliest that I uh, researched for my story was, at least in Australia in particular, was in the 70s. 1979, there was some big bits that fell in WA. Um, and I think that's the earliest recording in Australia. There you go. I may be wrong, but for, yeah, that's... That we know of anyway. That's some significant bits. Do... Oh, this is an interesting one. Oh, so, 1957, 1957. Sorry. Yes. There you go. That um, was the first ever space junk. Space junk since 1957. <laughs> Established 1957. <laughs> um, this is an interesting question that I've just lost. Oh no, here it is from Ryan from Kaurumup, Kaurumup Primary School. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, I don't know how to say your school's name. But how much space junk lands on the moon? Because we all Ooh. we hear about it landing back on Earth, but does it? Do we know if any's ever landed on the moon? I don't know if any's. I mean, perhaps, I guess technically the stuff that was left on the moon from the Apollo space missions but is technically be, space junk. Or is it moon junk? I guess that's moon junk, isn't it? Because it's kind of like yeah. junk here on Earth is just normal junk. Yeah. So, yeah, hmm. interesting. Um, yeah, that's a good, that's an interesting thought, though, because... I yeah, guess next time humans go to the moon, we'll find we'll out find if there's them. any junk there. There you go. Just got to wait for that Artemis mission to get there. Um, Some space junk. Yeah. 
has been found to be on a lunar collision course. Oh, oh okay. so some space junk is on a course to crash into the moon. So there we go. Yeah. Now, Tyler from um, my mates at Kidman Park Primary, I won't ask about the windows because I do every time, <laughs> even though I just asked. Um, Tyler wants to know how big can space junk get? Oh, well, um, very big. Yes. You know, I think uh, if you saw in the news the, the big sphere looking thing that, that was washed up on the beach in WA, that was that rather sizable. Yeah. Because I sometimes I think about space junk and I think of, because you hear about the ones floating around in space that then like shatter like a window of the um, ISS, ISS. And yeah. like that's like a fleck of, spa of paint. So it's like really, really small. But of course there's like massive yeah, <laughs> yeah. bits of space well, junk. I, well, well. I went to the, um, the space agency and spoke to uh, someone there and they said that, yeah, pretty much anything that is no longer used is space junk. So even full satellites, huge satellites, that's technically space junk. So yeah, but most of it is is quite small. You know, a yes. lot of it is sort of up to ten millimeters big. It's it's, it's or like small. a lot of it when it comes back into Earth's atmosphere it would burn up on the yeah, way in. But up. I guess some of the space junk has been built to not do that. Yep. Because they're like satellites or rocket parts, so they've been designed to withstand those heats, which is why you get the massive bits falling down. I imagine. Yes. Um, William from Pulteney Grammar School, hey, hey, wants to know, why does some space junk return to Earth while others stay in orbit? Do we know? Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty much just luck of the draw. P pretty much all space junk that is designed, uh, anything that's designed to go to space is usually designed to then stay up there. Um, mm -hmm. The only times things really fall back down to Earth are uh, when it's planned to come back down to Earth. They'll put it in a, a low er Earth orbit and the gravity from the Earth will pull it back in. Um, but experts will usually know the trajectory of it and sometimes they'll get the trajectory off a little bit. Like this is what happened in um, back in the 70s in WA. They got the trajectory for the NASA Skylab just wrong and it ended up landing on uh, in WA instead of in the Indian Ocean where it was meant to land. Mm. Um, but even in those cases, they know ahead of time that it's going to land somewhere it's not meant to and they can warn people. So yeah, there's that safety in mind. But yeah, it's pretty much just luck of the draw. Sometimes if something crashes into each other up there as well, that might affect their trajectory and it'll fall back to Earth and unexpectedly. Because, like unlike on Earth where we have roads and traffic lights and there's rules, there's not really there's not that up in space. There's so none of that up there, yeah. Nothing controlling the space. No one has the right junk. of way. Just no. <laughs> they're all going, you go. No, yeah. No, no, you go. And then they both go at the same time and... Oh, yeah. not, not good. No. Um, uh, Lincoln from Margaret River Senior High School. Hey, Lincoln wants to know, what what is your thoughts on what we should do if there is an uncontrollable amount of space junk making space travel near impossible and if you think we should take precautions now so i guess really what what should what needs to be done um well do we do we have an answer <laughs> do you have an answer i mean that's a concern that i think the entire space community is worried about right now yes. um and they're working on ways to to solve that there's plenty of companies out there who are working on new devices that they're setting up there to capture space junk and bring it back down to earth yes. um and with uh, nets and with stuff nets. lasers yeah some of it's mm. some of it's quite high tech as you said mm. with lasers others are not so high tech it's just a net that captures yeah. it um, a person named a net is yeah. just going to go up there and <laughs> catch it good on you a net <laughs> <laughs> you're doing doing god's work <laughs> Um, but there's also, um, are there restrictions coming in? I feel like this was a thing. There um, is dis there's discussions at the moment on whether they should bring in more restrictions as to who can send stuff up there yes. in the first place. Because isn't it something like the amount of satellites we've sent up is going to like, that we've sent up in the past 40 or 50 mm. years or even longer, 60, 70 years, it's going to like double in the next 10 years. Yeah, is that from now until 2030, I think there's going to be a rise of around about 50 something thousand satellites which is pretty much the entirety of the start of space travel to now Why? in the next few years People up to 2030 love so satellites don't yeah they? yeah i mean a lot of our our lives and our everyday lives rely on satellites and oh. space technology you know everything you do on your phone oh probably is, watching this watching is this is satellite. through, through satellite oh, connectivity okay. so 
as are we that part grows, of the problem? <laughs> I guess we're contributing to it, aren't we? We're a bit hypocritical. No, no. Well, we, we didn't send the satellites up. No, no. we're but just yeah, using them. That's the thing. So it's like mm. if in the future we're, we're obviously going to still need satellites to do a lot of things, technology is only going to get more advanced. So, yeah, I think there are people, going back to the questions, putting in precautions now to try and sort of get it under control. Mm. Do you think, like, because there's a lot of space in space, <laughs> I imagine. Send it a bit further out. Yeah. Or is that irresponsible? Yeah. Send it to another planet. Let, let some aliens deal with it. Um, yeah. well, what if some aliens sent their space junk to us? What if all the space junk up there isn't actually all ours? And there's. I, I mean, it could be. I feel like there was a question in here sort of that. hinting towards that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they thought it might have been aliens leaving the space <laughs> junk, which I don't believe they've found any space junk that does belong to an alien. No. Cannot confirm nor deny that. What? There are a lot of pieces that are untracked, so they don't actually know oh. exactly what they are or where they are, here, so it's possible. Here it is. It's Emma from Our Lady Help Christian School, and Emma says, oh, well, actually, it says, by the way, this is a joke, but <laughs> I'm going to read it as if it was a serious question. Mm -hmm. yep. They are just saying it's space junk, but I think it's actually um, aliens. Mm. That's what Emma says, and even though Emma says, by the way, it's a joke and I love BTN, we, we're going to take that as It's an interesting fact. theory. It's an interesting theory. Yeah, I think we should look into that. Um, should we do? We'll do one more question, yes. and then we're going to move on to reefs. So, if you're watching us live and want to send in a question, um, you still can, but uh, maybe talk about reefs <laughs> instead. <laughs> the Great Barrier Reef. Um, oh, this is a good one from Mason from Kidman Park Primary again. How far away is Space Junk? Um, above the Earth's surface. So how, how high up? I don't do have an exact wow. distance, but wow. in low Earth orbit, which I believe is several hundred, I don't know. So all right, <laughs> well, what about we'll, this? We'll get back to you this on that. one you will be able to answer. Yes. So it's from Hanley from PJSH Homeschool. Hey Hanley, um, have you ever seen a space bit of space junk before? Have you personally mm. seen? I haven't seen any that I've found myself. I've so. seen some in museums, oh. but um, yes. Uh, what do we have there? Is that 2000 Ks <laughs> is above the earth is where a lot of the space junk is in low earth orbit. Mm. So there we go, quite a way away. We'll be all right. There you go. There you go. Well, Lovely. All thank right. you, Joe, no for filling in for Thomas. And ready? It's seamless change. And oh, yeah, it's seamless oh, change. Oh. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this on for the next green screen. I'll put it on backwards. Okay, where are we off to now? We're gonna bring in Liber, and well, you already know where we're off to. We're off to the the reef, the yeah, Great Barrier Reef. I don't reef. bring my snorkel. I don't I don't need a snorkel because I'm oh, can I, I? I'm just a fish. Can I be a fish too? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Isn't this the greatest thing in the... I'm a fish too. <gasps> I think we change this to ask, instead of being ask a reporter, it ask should be a ask a floating head. Or just ask a fish. Well, for this, it could be very specifically a -A ask a fish. Um, ask a fish, yeah. So, hello, Lava. Hi. Now, ask a reporter got cancelled last week. Mm -hmm. That um, was very sad. That was very sad. I was crying. Oh, were you really? No, I wasn't. Oh. I'm, it's fine. We're here. You, you got through it. Yeah. Um, but well, we're gonna we're gonna because we did get so many questions sent through. Yeah. Um, we're gonna answer some now. And uh, right, do you actually questions. do you want to quickly give a bit of context as to what the story was because it was a week ago, so we're behind behind the news at this point. We're, yeah, we are so, behind behind <laughs> so the news. So what was the story about? All right, so it was pretty much UNESCO was about to put the Great Barrier Reef on the in danger list. So they have mm. like a list of, so they have another list, which is their World Heritage List, which is like all these awesome cool sites that have some sort of important uh, natural historical thing about them that should be preserved for people in the future. Um, so that's the World Heritage sites list and mm. then they have another list inside that which is called the in danger list which is all these sites that might not last for the future generations um because they're in danger of being destroyed or the thing that makes them special is going to die or get lost mm. so they were going to put the great barrier reef on that list the in danger list and then they were like actually you know what the government's done a 
decent job in the past year. It seems like the reef is getting a bit better. So let's give them another chance before we put it on the endangered list. And this is a bit of a uh, Taylor's oldest time because this happened last year, did it? Or the year before? Uh, it, Same thing, 10 year. There's been a sec, few. Whatever, and there's been a few times where they've pretty much just been like, okay, we're going to put it on the endanger list. And the government's like, no, we'll do don't something. Do don't do it. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, we'll give you one more chance. But last mm. year um, they did come and they were like, we're not happy. Um, like we had people come and like check out the reef. And like we're not happy with how it is. It's mm. still going on the endanger list if you don't fix it by next year, but we'll give you another year. Mm -hmm. And then they were happy this year, so. But... It's still not all good yet. They're just saying that it's progressing. Okay. And so, it. and it's all to do with coral bleaching. And so I've got a question from Hugh from Howrah Primary School. How, yes. how are we doing? Uh, that was very good. Um, no. Hugh wants to know, how long does it take for coral to become bleached? Coral to become bleached? Is it? Well. Is it uh, like when you go and you bleach your hair and maybe if it how depending how dark your hair is it might take a couple of goes? No, I don't think anyone's <laughs> pouring bleach into the Great mm -hmm. Barrier Reef. I'd hope not. That's not how it works. Um yeah, no. I mean who knows, maybe there's some dodgy person doing it. But anyway, mm. um how long does it take? So pretty much if ocean temperatures rise by a bit, so even like one degree Celsius, it can take them like I think it was like four to eight weeks. Yeah, so if if it's like higher than one celsius for like four weeks straight then that can trigger a mass bleaching event so yeah so just a few weeks can make a huge difference wow and just like one degree yeah oh that's wow yeah. um uh Dulane from rockhampton grammar school wants to know what percentage of the great barrier reef is dead so Ooh. so when because can and should we clarify that when coral gets bleached it's not necessarily dead yes um do you want to explain that yeah, process of so when coral gets bleached it means that the algae that it gets a lot of its food from leaves it right. um and so if that algae is gone for long enough then the coral will die but if the temperature goes down again and the algae comes back then the coral can come back to life yes so do we know then how what percentage of the reef of the coral there has died so i guess it depends what year so if we want to go from like 2016 and 2017 so in 2016 30 percent of the reef died and in 2017 another 20 percent of the reef died so i guess since then like around 50 percent but then even before then there's been some mass bleaching events that have killed it so yeah mm. i guess depends when you're starting it yeah it could come back and yeah and it could come back for sure. um makali makali from sans Suchi Sensochi Public School. I'm sorry, I'm butchering a, butchering butchering. a lot of these names today. Um, but it's actually really great. There's a lot of schools in here that I haven't seen before. Yeah, so maybe they need to put like pronunciations really in brackets. Just for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really great to see you all you um, you tuning in to Ask a Reporter. Um, Makali wants to know, can the fish still live in bleached coral? Yeah, so the fish can live in the Great Barrier Reef, even if the coral is bleached. So they have other food sources like seaweed. Um, but there are some fish that might not fare well. Like some of them are like pretty good at like finding other food and then some of them aren't. So it really depends on the fish. Okay, yeah. depends on the fish. Yeah. Um, and speaking of fish, um, Mila from Gul Gunong Primary School in Victoria mm -hmm. wants to know how many fish are in the coral reef? Have I'll you ever gone and counted? I haven't counted them, no. Maybe I should do that next time I go. There's a lot of them. There's over 4,000 types of fish, so species of fish, but I don't know how many. Individual. It would be very hard to... We have to wait for a census or something. Yeah, and make sure all the fish fill out that census because yes. sometimes there's those census dodges. Naughty the fish. Have <laughs> yeah. you ever been to the Great Barrier Reef? This isn't. This could be a question, but I'm just yeah. asking. No, I have been. I've, oh yeah, I've been there twice. Oh well, yeah. I've never been. <gasps> Can you d explain, describe it to me? It's very wet and very warm and very fishy. <laughs> no, it's it's really beautiful. Um, it's really nice snorkeling there. There's all this fish and like it's 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 like a nice temperature. I get cold very easily. Okay. So when you go higher up like more north and the ocean temperature gets higher as yeah, well because naturally it's like nice. like what is it like high 20s low 30s or something like that so it's nice and warm oh look sorry what? um because i had another question and they've actually put a pronunciation 
of the score. I've noticed no there's way. actually a few. In um, brackets. Go Nong. Go Nong? Go Nong. Go Nong. Primary ah, school. Nice. Um, which uh, Emmy from there wanted to know, what do you think about this, Liber? What do I think about the what fact that the Great Barrier Reef is dying? Uh, I mean, it's not good. I would like no. to see it again. It was a really fun time visiting it. Um, and I would like to visit and swim in it again. Um, mm. And also, it's a very important thing for the world. Like, obviously, like our world is a massive ecosystem filled with smaller ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And if one of one big element of it, like the Great Barrier Reef, gets damaged, mm -hmm. then other elements of it get damaged too. Oh yeah, sorry. By the way, it's not dying. It's in danger. Uh, mm. Some bits of it have died, but they can also recover. So. Yes. Yeah, it's it's not all doom and gloom. No, it can recover. Um, yeah. I I want to ask this question from Olivia, also from Gonong Primary, just because I feel like it's a very polite question. Okay. Um, it says, "How long is the reef, and how wide is the reef?" If you can't answer, that's okay. Oh, that's. I love that. that, that can is you very write nice. that? Can everyone write that in all of their? <laughs> Hey, just, <laughs> that's gonna just if you can't answer fill this, up. that's okay. Um, so do you know how long or how wide it is? Or how yeah, big so it is? It's pretty big. It is pretty big. It's yeah, pretty big. It's called the Great Barrier Reef for a reason. There you go. Um, but it's like around 2,000 kilometers long and like 60 yeah. to 250 kilometers wide. Depends on because it like, gets narrow in some parts and like mm. wider in some parts. Oh, okay. So a little birdie told us it is covering roughly 348,000 square kilometers and it's made up of almost 3,000 individual reefs and 900 islands. The islands are pretty cool. They remind me of Moana. Oh, do they? Yeah. The islands are quite... Have you see, Have you ever seen Finding Nemo? Yes, of course. Because that was set in the Great Barrier Reef. It was, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Pete oh, Sherman. Uh, I just... I, I, had, I had a question, and I've gone back to this one, but hang on. Um, All right. It was from, it was it was a fake question, but it was oh. so silly. What? It was from Purple from Purple Public School, so okay. no, it was fake. But they said, if Jack was a worm, would you still hire him? Oh, I mean, <laughs> would you still be able to? I don't talk? know because well, yeah, that's there's. I think that raises more questions. questions. We could hire you as our professional worm expert. Yeah, or one. like to really dig deep into uh, underground stories or I something. I see what you... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really deep, funny. deep into things. Uh, and Amina wanted to know from Yuka Homeschool, Amina's asked a few questions. Mm, lots um, of questions. If the fish were to eat the bleached coral, would it affect them at all? So I don't know. Eat <laughs> the bleached coral? I don't know, actually. I don't think like it would have anything harmful in it. It's just that it's missing stuff. So, I don't they know. Probably, do they eat coral fish? I know there's some, yes, uh, some fish eat it, like parrot fish. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I don't know if it would mean that if they're eating bleached coral, that means they're not getting the nutrients that they need. Because I don't know if the mm. algae makes a difference or not. But who knows? That's who knows? one to research. Ami Amina also asked a question for Jack. What's on your shirt? Is it shampoo, conditioner, lotion, soap? Ah, it's Polly Pocket. It's po they're Polly Pockets. No way. Getting in early for the next movie. Yeah, are they planning Barbie's on making over. a movie for that? <laughs> um, so there's that mystery solved. And also just Stephanie... Um, I don't know if uh, Stephanie said, Jack, your clothes have the background in it. Oh. And I feel like that's a really good oh, segue true, some to of put them this back green. on. Yes. Are you cold? Oh, yeah, because that, that's green. No, this is actually a very warm jacket. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is brilliant. Um, all right. Do you want to <laughs> do, should we do some shout outs? Yeah, let's do it. I'll let's do go. them from today because you are the people tuning in, even though, and it might be the same people, but let's go up Could to... Be. Gilwinga. Mm, Gilwinga. Okay. Gilwinga. Did they put a pronunciation? Or? Not that I can see. Well, hopefully it's Gilwinga. Hi, Gilwinga. Blackman's Bay Primary School. Hi. Uh, he, uh, home, we've got a couple of homeschool. One of them says PJSH. I don't know what. PJSH. Know what um, Toowoomba State High School. Hi, Toowoomba. Queensland. Our Lady Help of Christians. Hi. Oh, Ol Hock, Ol Hock. That's our oh, lady. Oh, the help abbreviation. Is do yeah. you at do you at um, school go around and say, we go to Ol Hock? 
Why would they say that at school? Oh, well... They're in the school. If you, were, if you got asked by someone, what school do you go to? Do you go all hawk? I don't know. Oh, maybe they say O-L-H-O-C. That's still a mouthful. O-L-H-O-C? That's... All that's... hawk. <laughs> yeah. Please let us know. That is important yes. to know. Next up, um, some reporter. Oh, we got... Um, hey, I, your number one fan. That's oh. from Bernie Primary School. Thank you, our number one fan. Wow, what a name. Um, Artemon Public School. Artemon. Artemon? Oh, <laughs> I was like, is it? Where is it? Sounds like a transformer. It's a- Ataman. Ataman. Carlingford West. Nice. Sa- Sapsis. What? <laughs> Sapsis. <laughs> I think that's Rosely. also. It seems like PS is probably a primary school. So S A H. I don't know what that is. Sups. Th- Thornley West. <laughs> um, I've, Rosary. 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 The same. Yeah. Rosa. Rosary. I guess. Rosary, yeah. Yuka, home learning. Hi. Kawaramup. 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 I have no idea. up. I don't. Fun, but... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted. All right. Baron, Baron Heads. Warren Wood. Viewbank. Gilston. Woo! Berwick. Yuka. <laughs> St. Timmer. Port Malunga. Uh, Pultney. Pultney? Yeah, Pulteney, Viewbank, <laughs> Oxford Falls, mm. International School of Western Australia. Wow, very fancy. Uh, Hello. Coast, C- Coatesville. Coatesville. Do Coatesville. they wear a lot of Bur- coats? Bur- Bur- maybe. Bur- Berwick. Belmont Primary School. Hi. Belmont. Do you know that one? Uh, I grew up in Lake Macquarie. My Did brother you? and sister went to Belmont High. Mm. So, nice. Um, Toowoomba State High, Samford, Margaret River, Cor- Corpus. Corpus? Yuka, Kidman okay. Park. Kidman. How are the windows? Oh no, I got meant to ask. <laughs> <Hi>. um, <laughs> Is that where you at? Maybe? Pardon? No, I, I went there one year and volunteered and cleaned their windows. Okay. Um, Hopefully they're still clean. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Well, what a time this has been. This I've, has been a time. I've been a floating head. We've talked about space junk. We've talked about the Great Barrier Reef. I've mispronounced countless everyone's school names, names and everyone's name so they need to give a pronunciation guide every time they submit every it. single time um, and also they should say at the end if you don't know the answer and it's yes okay. we really but and that that you know what that'll be my favorite question because <laughs> that all, they're gonna all put it in now for real great okay great. all right amelia will when <laughs> amelia returns she'll have no idea why everyone's telling her that it's okay if you don't know the answer and she'll just think you're being really polite but <laughs> we'll know we'll everyone's know. really concerned about amelia not knowing the answer that's what yeah. we're gonna well know. no because amelia usually asks the questions so oh okay she'll be like oh yeah. wow they don't care if you don't know the answer that's wow. nice anyway <laughs> have an awesome weekend uh yes we'll see you next week see um, you guys for another episode of ask a reporter maybe it won't be as chaotic maybe it will be maybe it'll be even more chaotic yeah um but yeah see you then bye whoa